One, two. Oh. Okay, uh, if everyone would please sit down again. We're on a tight schedule today. Or, or quietly walk back to your place. Okay, hello everyone. I'm uh, Johan. Uh, this is my first HashiCorp meetup. Uh, I work at a data collaboration startup called InfoSum. You've probably never heard of us, but hopefully eventually you will. Uh, I've been a Go developer for about three years, and in my spare time I enjoy working on open source projects. Um, I'm a contributor to, go to the Go programming language, and uh, I run my own Go blog writing about Go in gRPC. You might even have read one of my posts if you use Go in gRPC. Um, I've been using console at vault and vault at work for a while. I thought I'd get involved with the other HashiCorp people here because I'm mostly a Go guy. This is my first non-Go meetup as well. Uh, so I'm here today to talk about certificate distribution, which is one of those problems that uh, can be tricky to solve. Um, but first, let's take a step back. TLS is uh, the gold standard for backend communications, um, providing both strong encryption and with MTLS, uh, you get the trust that you're talking to the right party and the right party is talking to you. Um, so how many of you in this room are using MTLS to secure their backend communications? It's not that many. Okay, TLS. Okay, how many of you would like to be using MTLS to secure your backend communications? It's, it's come on, you, I, you better not be saying it's too slow for you, because that's unlikely. For some of you that might be true, but unlikely. Anyway, you've got a, a, a TLS app um, for, uh, and, and, and life is good. You get that fuzzy feeling that you get when you look at puppies. Um, but TLS is complicated, so getting to that point can be hard. Uh, these are just some of the acronyms that you might be familiar with, which uh, resolve around uh, encryption and, and, and TLS. I don't know what what Cha Cha Poly stands for. It's a dance as well. Actually, I looked it up. I wanted to get a picture for this, but it looked way too funny, so I just thought I'd have a, a one of these meme pictures instead. Everyone, everyone loves memes, right? Um, so. If you want to de deploy a t TLS stack, you might have to uh, look into all of this. And I know at the Go meetup, uh, Liz was giving a talk. You might have heard of Liz. She, she gives great talks at the Go um, conferences uh, around the world. And she was, she was trying to do something with uh, certificates. And she ended up writing like a series of talks just to explain how TLS works. Uh, so that's, that's where we are today. Obviously, TLS is still the best we've got, so we should still use TLS, everyone. But anyway, how many of you are guilty of manually renewing a certificate for a critical service? Yeah, I see a few hands, yep. Thank you for owning up. Some of you who are not owning up, I know you probably didn't want to. But see, so ideally we'd like to automate this, right? So let's encrypt exists um, and has solved a lot of problems for a lot of um, developers who are exposing their services to the public internet, uh, just having a uh, cert bot running next to your server, just renewing the certificate automatically is, is, is great. If you're using Go, you might have heard of this auto cert library, which is also really good. Who's used auto cert? No? Yeah? It's, uh, it's developed by Brad Fitzpatrick. Basically what it does is it will uh, sit inside your Go application and if a uh, Let's Encrypt request comes along, uh, for your DNS, you will like verify it and then um, grab the certificate from Let's Encrypt and serve that. It's really cool. It all just works out of the box. Uh, however, it's not possible to use TLS for your internal services, and it doesn't support deploying client-side certificates either, obviously, because Let's Encrypt relies on you being able to prove that you own a, um, a DNS uh, record. So, but wait, this is a HashiCorp meetup. What, the, what am I talking about, right? Um, HashiCorp Vault, we're already using HashiCorp Vault for our secrets, right? And, and after this, you will, <laughs> after the previous talk, you will have known very well how to deploy Vault as well. Uh, but Vault has a PKI backend. It's not talked about a lot, but you can use Vault to issue certificates, uh, both client side and server side. Uh, so could we use Vault to, to solve the problem of distributing certificates? Yes. So. I wrote the library, which I called Certify. My girlfriend came up with the name. And it, it does basically what AutoCert does. So it's as easy as, as Let's Encrypt, but for your internal services, 
It's both, both service sites and client side certificates. Um, it lazy issues certificates uh, as, as request comes in for, for DNS records. Um, and it lives right in your Go app. There's no need for like a separate container running a uh, cert bot and, and uh, renewing things every now and then. Um, multiple uh, simultaneous requests are deduplicated, so you don't hammer your ham uh, Walt server when, when you start up and you get a thousand requests. It will send a single request to uh, access a, a new certificate if it needs to. And it supports Vault, uh, the Cloudflare CFS, CFSSL, and now also uh, the AWS Certificate Manager PCA, which they're calling ACMPCA. So that's an acronym within an acronym. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a mess. But uh, <laughs> and anyone who's used Amazon's um, API packages will know that they're not pretty go. But uh, but there you go. This has all been written for you already. So if you have uh, AWS as your certificate manager, you can plug that straight into the library. So so how does it work? You it exposes a simple uh, struct that you uh, initialize. Uh, you can define a common name, or you have to define a common name. But the common name is not necessarily used. Uh, in the um, subject alternative names, of course. Uh, you um, here we've kind of skimmed over the issuer. I'll get to that later. That's the what actually um, does the issuing. Uh, you you define like a cache, and in this case, uh, I've got a in-memory cache. Uh, so obviously, when you restart your service, uh, you'll lose the memory, uh, lose the certificates that have been issued so far. Uh, not the end of the world, but you can also use an on-disk cache. Uh, there's a cert uh, parameter for configuring uh, how long before the certificate expires that you want to renew it. And uh, then you can also optionally configure things like extra subject alternative names, uh, IP subject alternative names, nicely typed stuff as well. <laughs> and then what you do is you just take this certify struct and you assign it to your TLS config uh, in your server configuration. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more later about exactly how that works, but then if you start your server, uh, it will all just magically work. So now, the, the, this doesn't detail how to use the issuer, so let's see how we can use this with Vault. So step one, set up Vault with PKI. This has left us an exercise to the reader, but <laughs> hopefully it should be a little bit easier uh, given the uh, Vault documentation that's coming out. Um, where did I, 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 where did you anyway, um, so once you've got PKI set up, you've got a, a, your CA certificate set up. You um, create the PKI role for your server, and you need to limit the PKI role to the DNS records that your server are supposed to have. So you have a role for um, Monzo in this case. Let's say it's only allowed to issue records for the Monzo DNS. Otherwise, um, it can come along and pre pretend to be any server. Uh, and then you obviously you get a token, and you just uh, create this simple struct here. Um, you can configure because the Vault API supports uh, specifying how long a certificate should live. You can specify how long you want it to live for here. But obviously, because this is so easy, you could easily just make certificates live for like an hour and not even have to care about revocation or like a day maybe is okay as well because it just automatically uh, reissues itself. Uh, you can specify other subject alternative names, which is some weird UOID, UTF-8. Like when I was writing test for this, I literally had to go into the vault tests to find out what the format for this is. But if you need to use it, there you go. You can use it. Enjoy. <coughs> uh, so how does this, does this actually work under the hood? So uh, I showed you before you plug into this get certificate method in the TLS config of uh, the Go TLS config struct. Uh, so when a server request comes in for your server hosted on monzo.uk, it will call get certificate with a server name set to monzo.uk, and inside our certify library, what it does is it will check, do we have a certificate for this uh, server name in the cache? And uh, if we do, and the certificate is not due for new renewal, it will just return it straight up, so that's obviously the fast path. Otherwise, uh, if it's not in the cache, it will call the issuer, which goes to the Vault API, requests a certificate for monzo.uk, uh, and um, stores it in a cache and then returns the certificate. Uh, as I mentioned, the requests are deduplicated, so this expensive step here is only done once, and if several requests comes in, they all get the reply at the same time. Using the uh, single flight package in Go, really cool, you should check it out if you haven't used it. Um, and, and that basically it. So uh, let's just quickly reflect on what we learned. Um, we learned to set up a 
our internal Go apps with automatic client and cert uh, server certificate distribution, and we're one step closer to having that fuzzy feeling uh, in our TLS deployment. Uh, and okay, I'd just like to give a quick thanks to Monzo for hosting us and for the London HashiCorp user group meetup organizers, that's Marcello mostly. It takes a lot of effort to host these meetups, so thanks Marcello. And thank you for listening.